Welcome to the Stop Over Drinking and Start Living podcast, where high achieving, goal oriented rebel women come to learn how to live a vibrant and fulfilling life without requiring alcohol to get through it. No labels, no judgments, no saying you'll never drink again, just real proven methods to help you stop rebelling against yourself with alcohol so you can drink less and do more. I'm your host, Angela Masenik. Let's dig in. I want a sugar. I know you like- Welcome to episode 239, interview with Emily and Amy. Hey, welcome back to the podcast. This is an interview I did with my clients, Amy and Emily. They are married to twin brothers, and they both joined Alive AF, my monthly coaching program, and just showed up and did the work and shared, and they have just done so much work. They've reduced their drinking significantly, and I had to have them on the podcast to share about their relationship, their journey to stop over drinking, and all of the benefits of being mothers and wives and friends and family members and all the good stuff. So go for a long walk, maybe sit with a nice hot cup of tea and enjoy this podcast episode. And thank you so, so much, Amy and Emily. I really, really appreciate you. Well, hello. Welcome to the podcast, Emily and Amy. Hello. Thank you. I'm so excited about our recording today. Thank you so much for coming. Yes, I'm excited as well. Yeah. Thanks for having us. You're so welcome. So listeners, just so you know, Emily and Amy are um, sister-in-laws married to twin brothers, and they joined the Alive AF monthly membership not too long ago, and they were very active in the membership and sharing and exploring and doing all the work and had amazing results and are having amazing results. And I just thought that it would be so fun to have them on the podcast and kind of share their stories and, um, you know, get some more details about what it took for them to sort of change their relationship with alcohol. And I'm sure that's not the only thing that changed, but we'll get into that Hmm. when we get into your stories a little bit. But thank you so much again, and welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely. So who wants to go first? Oh, I don't care. You want me to go? (laughs) Sure. Go right ahead. Okay. All right. So what would you like me to do? Just introduce myself yeah, or where yeah. should I start? You can just, so just this is Amy who's talking since they won't know since they're not watching this probably. <laughs> so Amy is going to go first. And I think you were the kind of the ringleader, right? To kind of like get everybody on board. That Emily's the ringleader. Oh. She, yeah. So maybe she should go first yeah, because she it. is the one that brought me to you. Okay, yeah. Cool. Emily, you take it yeah, away. Yeah. Let's do okay. it, Emily. All right, I'll go first. So I'm Emily. Um, Let's see, just a little background. I am a teacher and I'm going into my 16th year, which is insane because I feel like I just started. I don't know. Um, You look like you just started too, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Like there's no way you're doing that for 16 years. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's unreal. And um, I have three children. They are 12, 9, and then those are boys, and then Mm -hmm. my daughter is 3. Wow. So um, we're a little busy, and they're Mm -hmm. in all the sports because, you know, it's just how kids are. And um, so let's see, a little bit about my drinking history. So I am actually divorced and remarried Mm -hmm. to my twin. So I married very young. I married. um, Is that what you guys call them? Like you say my twin and my twin? Usually. We call them lots of names. I love this. Okay. (laughs) Depends on the day. Okay. (laughs) But they are, oh, I mean, they, they are very, supposedly not identical, but like they are pretty, like my mom can't tell the difference between them. I mean. Their mannerisms, wow. like, you know, our kids can tell the difference uh-huh. and we can, and that's about the extent of it, wow. mm-hmm. which is so funny. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was previously married and I married young. I think I was 22 when I first got married mm-hmm. and I had my first son when I was 25. So now that was a, it was not a good marriage. It wasn't good three months into it, but there was so much shame around leaving Mm -hmm. and you know shame is like the hardest thing to sit with so I just tried to fix everything so I tried to fix my marriage I kind of threw myself into work threw myself into motherhood and just kind of chugged right along didn't really let myself feel a lot of it but he was not a big drinker so I didn't really drink a lot 
in my 20s. Like, I kind of would, like, if we went out, but, like, it was not anything that I even had second thoughts about. So we had our second boy. I think I was 28 when I had him. Mm -hmm. So we ended up getting divorced when the boys were two and a half and one. Okay. And that's kind of like when the shit hit the fan for me. So I had to tell my family everything that I had been covering up for the six years of that marriage, Mm -hmm. which was infidelity and um, just like he was, I don't know if he was verbally abusive, but like I went in like this person and came out like this person. Mm -hmm. So just like he like just really kind of beat down and I felt like everything was my fault and all of those feelings, you know? Yeah. So I, my mom is kind of a badass. Actually, she is totally. Yes, she is. So, I <laughs> I, I I, <laughs> Amy knows this. So when I told her everything, she was like, okay, like you've got to just move on. And mm-hmm. I had gone to counseling. Like I had really tried to like make this work mm-hmm. and I'd gotten good tips from counseling. Like I used a lot of journaling and I set some boundaries with him for like the last ditch effort. And he of course like plowed right through those. Mm-hmm. So She's like, get your stuff, come over, and you're leaving him. And I was like, no, I'm kicking his ass out. So I did. And then Mm -hmm. we got divorced. And um, so when I was without the boys, like when we started co-parenting, I started to turn to alcohol because I didn't know how to deal with that loneliness. Like my whole life, adult life, had been like parenting them. You know, like Mm -hmm. I, that is like what kept me not feeling the feelings of the terrible marriage. So when they were gone, it was like, I just didn't know what to do with myself. Mm -hmm. So I would just drink wine. Mm -hmm. And, um, but when they were with me, I didn't because they were so little. I mean, like one in three, like they were babies. And Mm -hmm. so I just knew that I had to be on all the time. And, um, when I got divorced, Laporte is such a small town <laughs> that um, it spread like wildfire. So everyone knew and um, people that I work with told Amy because they were friends. Like Amy and I used to, we taught together for a year. Mm-hmm. So then she told my twin and my twin then Facebook messaged me um, to hang out. And I was like, hard no, like I just not gonna date or anything so you guys were friends before you even got married to brothers or you knew yeah we went to elementary school together and then we taught together for a year and so and I'm gonna just insert something into your story Emily (laughs) so she was always the one who got away from her twin so when I heard that she got divorced I sent him like a joking Facebook message that was like hey now's your chance Emily's single again Mm -hmm. and 30 minutes later I got a response back that was like hey you want to hang out like can she come to your baby shower I was like yes absolutely (laughs) that's yeah so they had a history as well we did and um, at the time my twin was living in Chicago which is about a 70 mile difference. So I would only see him on weekends. I didn't have the boys. So Mm -hmm. it was like, it was a really weird time in my life, but it was also like exactly what I needed. Like I was building this relationship, but I was still able to become the mom and figure things out and like do all the things I needed to do. So they were kind of like two separate. Mm -hmm. And um, on the weekends, I didn't have the boys. I would go visit him in Chicago. And so, I mean, that life is like just you know, bars on every corner, like mm-hmm. that was our entertainment is we would go, you know, try this restaurant, try this bar, we would, they have like booze at movie theaters. I mean, like it is everywhere, you know, yeah. and so that just kind of like became how we had fun connected. I mean, like everything, mm-hmm. it was everything. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really feel it creeping up until the pandemic. I'm going to be honest, mm-hmm. like I had my so we got married in 2018. Um, we had been dating about four years, I think. So we got married and then I had my third child in January of 2020. And so when I had her, you know, there were talks of COVID, but like, Mm -hmm. it was not the world shutting down. Mm -hmm. And then when she's three months old and I'm already dealing with postpartum anxiety, which I had not had with my other two children, it's like, oh, and by the way, your whole support system is now gone because we all think that like, like we didn't know how it was you know, how people were getting like so many questions. Yeah. So I 
just kind of like would have a glass of wine every single day. And I was not, I was like a weekend drinker. And Mm so I, she was still so tiny. So I wasn't a lot. I just, that's like what we did. I mean, we couldn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like my mom couldn't come and take, like help me. It was just, and then I'm trying to like do the online uh, schooling with my two children who at the time were second grade and kindergarten and think I don't know how to teach, even though I'm a teacher because I didn't do it the way I mean, like, (laughs) terrible, you know? No, I mean, yeah, I we were all know. there. Yeah, my and my then, youngest was in second grade. Right. Yeah. So that was, and that was also my maternity leave. Mm-hmm. Like, are you kidding? Yeah. So then, when we go back to school in April, I am at home teaching my two children, teaching my kids online, and I have a baby that's connected to me. So I just did not know how to cope with yeah. any of that, and so I did not like that I couldn't like find the power within me like I had in the past to like, you know, make it through this divorce and Mm -hmm. parent these two kids. Like I was like, I was just kind of like drowning. I didn't know what to do. So I started reading some literature on quitting drinking and my husband saw it and was like, what is this? And I was like, I just don't feel like I'm doing as good as I could. And he's like, but you don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. He's like, you're still doing all. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. Like, I don't have a problem. It's fine. I still parent my kids. I still like, everything's fine. And so, um, I was just kind of looking through podcasts and I came across yours. So this probably was like summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you talked about like your kids and the working full time and you had three kids, I was like, Oh my God, like Angela is me. I am Angela. Like I (laughs) feel this to my core. So I like binged all those episodes. (laughs) I love this full confession right now, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I was like, I'm like nursing tuned in. No. Um, So I, it just really, like, it really spoke to me. And so I started journaling again, which I had been doing uh, when I got divorced because my counselor had suggested that. So I did some, I did some heavy journaling that really helped kind of tried to transform my mornings back to like my workouts because that third baby that was a tough transition for me too. And I'm not sure it was the pandemic or that I went from two to three. Like it just, I was always a morning workouter. And then I had her and I was like, gosh, I don't even know. Like it, it was just kind of like finding me again. Yeah. So then I listened to you. And then I think, um, I don't know when your first wine free work week challenge was, I think it was 2021. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so I did the first one because mm-hmm. I had always been drinking on Thursday nights, like having wine because that was our date night because the boys were with their dad. So like I would be totally fine Monday through Wednesday, not even crave wine. And then Thursday would hit and my brain would be like, oh, my gosh, look at this crazy week you've had. You better have wine. Mm-hmm. So Thursdays, I didn't like that because then Friday I wasn't 100 percent at work. So I knew I wanted to change that. So with the wine free work free wine free work week, I was able to kick that and I was good Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. So then it was really just like Friday, Saturday, sometimes Sunday, sometimes not. Um, But it was last year, I just realized, like, again, I had this epiphany, like I, I could be doing so much more like I was sitting on the couch sulking in the time I didn't have to do XYZ while I'm sipping a glass of wine Mm -hmm. like I I just felt trapped and I was like looking for this this time that I needed to do all of these things not realizing it was right there I was just choosing to sit and drink wine instead did you did you notice that in that moment though or is it later when you realized it? you you still didn't see that at that time no I would I was all just pissed off on the couch you know like come on if this would just happen, then like, or if you would help more, <laughs> my poor husband. Making it, making the know. whole world change so that it could be easier for you. Yep, yep. That is exactly right. Yes, <laughs> everyone else should do this, and then yep. I'd be fine. Yep. Um, and so I joined uh, a live AF in March, and it just completely changed my life. Mm-hmm. I mean, I started instead of just like listening to the podcast, like, yes, Angela. Yes, I like did the work. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, oh, okay, so there it all. (laughs) Instead of just like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah, totally resonating, resonating. And then like actually applying it and putting pen to paper and like doing it all. Yeah, it's a difference. Absolutely. And I remember Mm -hmm. like in your podcast when you're like, now would be a good time to like pause and get paper. I'm like, okay, I'll do that tonight. But I wouldn't, you know, because then tonight would come and I'd be doing all the things. Right. (laughs) 
And so, and oh, before I did um, a live AF, oh, you did a wine free weekend Mm -hmm. challenge that I did. And that weekend I was like, okay, this is really nice because like all these sports activities, I don't, I feel really good. Like I'm not tired. I don't have a headache. I'm not grumpy, but like, I'm also kind of bored, Mm -hmm. but really I found out that the boredom now that I, 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 I'm not drinking at all. The boredom is like peace that I've never felt before. And it did take some getting used to, but now that I have it, like, I don't want to give it up. It's so good. I love that. So when I started Alive AF and doing the work, I realized I wanted to go back to not drinking on the weekends I had the boys. My 12-year-old is like an old soul. He's just very in tune. He asks a lot of questions. And I'm like, I got to be setting a different example with how to deal with stress, feelings. Mm -hmm. Like I just wanted to change what he was seeing. And um, in doing that, I realized like I was missing just like little things. Like we did the boundaries workshop, which changed my whole evening. And I can't I think remember when you shared one. that. Yeah. It's like bedtime. I used to be like, Oh my God, it's bedtime. Like why? So <laughs> I changed that. I mean, my husband and I still put my daughter down together cause she's so little, but like the boys, I mean, they're so independent now that they, and um, Coach Steph said to me, like, what magic this is, because if I hadn't done this work, I wouldn't get this gift. But they call it reverse tuck in. And like, mm-hmm. when I tell them it's time for bed, I'm already in bed reading now. So they come tuck me in, turn oh, on the big stop. light. Oh, I know. It's so cute. Turn <laughs> on the reading light. And then they're like, your favorite time, reverse tuck in. And it's honestly my favorite time of night. And I, I would have missed that if I had not, like, set that boundary of like, I cannot because sometimes I fall asleep, they go to bed at um, nine. And sometimes I'm asleep before nine, because I get up and work out at like 430. Mm -hmm. And get get ready so that I can get up and get everyone ready and off to school before I have to be to work, you know, like just the regular mom jam. So I just, I mean, it's magical. Like I just, I love it so much. Mm -hmm. And so setting the boundaries, and then that really helped at work too, because I had um, a couple parents that were very vocal about they did not enjoy how I taught their student all year. And um, so I would, you know, respond professionally and address all their concerns. And in about, at about May, I went to my administrator and I was like, hey, I've done literally everything I'm supposed to. And it's just not good anymore for my mental health. So from now on, you get to take over communication with this parent. And I honestly would have never done that before. Like, I was just always like, "Mm -hmm, yeah, sure, I can. Absolutely. Yes, Mm -hmm. I will make it right. And I let go like that. They they don't have to like me. I still know I'm a really good teacher, even if you don't like whatever I'm doing in the classroom. So like, it's just, I mean, my whole, my confidence has shifted. Like, it's just been so amazing. And I, I don't know what made me decide to go completely alcohol free. But in like mid June, I was like, I'm just gonna take like a 90 day break and Mm -hmm. see. And that was really scary when I said it out loud. But I knew I needed a bigger break to kind of get clarity on what I wanted my relationship to be because I was planning drinks. But like, it just, I don't know, like, it just didn't settle correctly with like, who I wanted to be like in my soul, like it just, it didn't feel true. Like Mm -hmm. something was still off. So I was like, I'm going to take this big break. Cause I've taken like 30 days off before, but it was always like, I was like waiting until the 30 days were up. So I was like, I'm just going to give myself this big break and just kind of see what comes up. Well, I'm almost at two months. That'll be next week. I think I'm not really counting days. So it's hard to keep track, but, um, and now I'm like, so I think I'm going to do a year. Because I've made it through a holiday. I made it through 4th of July. It was amazing. I swam. I went down my parents' slide, which I haven't done in 15 years. so fun. I remember everything. Nothing was foggy. I have patience. I mean, I just, it's so good. It's so, everything's a little bit brighter. Um, I feel the bad feelings, but, like, I know I can handle them now. Mm -hmm. Where, like, 
before I always felt like I, I could fall back on wine if this gets too hard. Like, you know, I can plan tomorrow if today's crazy to have a glass of wine. And now that that's not there, it's just, I don't, it's a non-factor. Like I was watching yesterday's replay because I was gone when we did the workshop and you're like, picture your favorite glass of wine. And my old brain would have been like, ice cold Pinot Grigio. Yesterday I was like, oh, can I just have water? (laughs) So good. Yeah. Can I have my LaCroix? Like, I don't, Mm -hmm. I, it was so interesting to watch what my thoughts were doing. And I really decided to dive into Quitlet too. So like I um, read Quit Like a Woman, which I would not have been ready for if I wasn't taking a large break, but that was really good. And then I listened to This Naked Mind by Mm -hmm. Annie Grace Mm -hmm. and that, the repetition in that, I was like, okay, this is where I need to be. Like, it just feels, and I, I am, what I read something the other day that instead of thinking of things that trigger you to want to drink, think of like glimmers that you would miss if you mm-hmm. were drinking. And so I've tried to kind of like do that too. And I just, I am more patient, like, you know, four to six witching hour is still hard, mm-hmm. but the fact that I know I can do it now, it just is not as like <gasps> every time it comes up, it's yeah. more like, it's not smooth. I mean, last week I was cooking dinner and my older son brought home half the neighborhood and was like, Hey, uh, they're here for spaghetti. And I was like, but they're not. <laughs> so if you could just like, have them sit outside and you get, you know, but I would have like lost it. Like, how dare you not call me for, I was just like, but no, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I feel so, the same way. Like I, I think about when I was in San Francisco just this past month and taking all three of my kids into the city, into the Haight-Ashbury district, driving my minivan, you know, and like parking and like nav- all three of my kids, like when, when they were younger and I was still drinking, like the idea, I wouldn't even have that idea because I knew that I couldn't handle it. Like it just wouldn't right. be, it just been, oh, hell no, there's no way I could handle that. That would be way too overwhelming and full of anxiety. And, like, now I just – and, like, or my husband traveled because, like, he traveled a lot when the kids were young. Him going away would be like, oh, my God, I have to have somebody come in. I can't handle this. I That was a repetitive thought that I would have all the time. I can't handle the evening routine. I can't handle it. I can't handle it because just that – it was just like a – it was like a – a limited – a limit that I put on myself, right, because of my lack of emotional expansion or capabilities, Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I'm totally feeling you on that. You're like, I got this. Like, no matter what happens, I know I can handle this, right? Because you've right. built that emotional strength within yourself. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's just been, I mean, I just, and like, I, I have noticed that my 12 year old has picked up on things. So, like, I now, once, oh, I also, you and Coach Steph would be proud, do not completely clean the kitchen before I sit on the couch. Nice. Yep. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Because the, <laughs> she's, she's the clean one out of the two of us. And I'm going to need to come over and see if that's true. <laughs> I don't listen. I don't always wipe the counters. Okay. I do make everybody put their dishes in the dishwasher. And the dishes are usually either soaking if they're not clean. But mama does not wipe the counters or take out the trash. I'm like, I'm going to go do a crossword. So my oldest is always like, hey, there's a puzzle book she loves so much now. <laughs> <laughs> So when did Amy come into this whole this whole situation? With well, the drinking? let's see. It's been a while because I yeah. tell her all of the life hacks. Um, because we just we like are each other's emotional support to get through life. Because mm-hmm. we have kids that are our youngest are only three months apart, mm-hmm. and they are besties. They go to the same babysitter, and they just love each other so much. So Amy, yes. were you married to the your twin when yes. Emily was married before? Yes. Yeah. So I got married when I was 23 um, to my twin. Okay. And we were together all through high school, all through college, all that jazz. Um, So she and I were actually teaching together. It was my first year of teaching ever. And her must have been your second year because you're only a year older than me. Mm-hmm. And exact, almost exactly, by the way, our birthdays are one day apart. So oh my gosh. you guys are like <laughs> sisters from another mister. That's very weird. <laughs> Um, but so yeah, I got married right after her, um, 
and you know we were teacher friends and all that good stuff and we just in a town like report you have so much history um with people who you know we've our paths across we were in high school at the same time all that stuff um so as far as Emily told me about your podcast um because and I will back up and kind of go through my my whole story but I will never forget it because she and I would text each other you know like oh I like drank too much wine again last night and I remember and it was this back and forth all the time that she was like yeah I know me too I really need to be better and I was like yeah me too and then one time I texted her and I was like well here I am like puffy on the couch again after Mm -hmm. too much wine like Mm -hmm. what's wrong with me and she was like you know you really shouldn't beat yourself up about that and I was like uh what excuse me who are you what's happening (laughs) she was like I've been listening to this podcast and like that's only going to make it worse you know, oh you're, God. it's only going to make it worse. And I was like, I'm going to need you to tell me more. <laughs> she sent me your podcast I and I started listening so to it much. while I was cooking dinner and all of that stuff. Yeah. It was like a very different response than I was you expecting like, what? to that. Yeah. I was like, is this, did I text the right person? Yeah. Like she normally tells me like, yeah, we're such pieces of shit. And like, we definitely, you know, like oh we, God, we used to you just did beat not, ourselves Emily. up together. <laughs> I you? mean, no, not really, but like, we know, <laughs> like, but, but yes, yeah, like, you're like, yeah, together, we suck. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Not like we weren't that bad, but honestly, I mean, your podcast was the first time I ever really heard someone say you shouldn't be mean to yourself mm. or like, And I didn't even realize how much I was doing it, but it's like, if I missed my workout, ugh, like, why can't I just get my, you know, not like terrible, but I think so many women. Like for years, it it grinds on you and it, it breaks, it breaks you down. Like you have no self concept after years and years and years of that little in your mind all the time about it, you know? Yeah. Like I'm always messing it up because I can't stay consistent (sighs) or I can't do this and I can't do that. And like, to think about the amount of that chatter that was going on compared to mm-hmm. the chatter that was positive, it was way, like way, yeah. way worse. Yeah. So, um, and I've never been, I mean, like I've never dealt with depression or anything like that. I've always felt like I've been a pretty outgoing, like outwardly confident person. Mm-hmm. So it just, it was really highlighting to think like how many women are probably having this narrative and men, but like, I think women put a lot of pressure on ourselves mm-hmm. to be perfect and have it all together mm-hmm. and fix everything and do everything. So, yeah. um, yeah, that was my introduction to you and your fabulous work, which Aww. has been life changing as well. Aww. When was that? Was that in 2020? Um, no. So that would have been, let's see. It was in, Oh my gosh, I like can't do math backwards. Well, um, you guys had just moved out of India, yeah. like from down down from us. So I'm thinking it was what 2021? 2021, I would say. Yeah. Because yes, because we closed on this house in 22. So fun fact, I moved out from her um from being her neighbor and lived with my parents for nine months with my two kids and my husband while we looked for our house now. And uh I remember I was sitting in their basement watching my kids play when you sent me that text I was like wow. oh, okay something something new is happening so yeah 2021 I'd say mm-hmm. wow yeah 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 so then yeah. what so what'd you say so tell tell me a little bit about like what you were drinking like what was your was your similar to Emily yeah well yes to no so um it's interesting so I I also got married young to my twin you know like I said high school sweethearts college all the way through um, we went to IU, which is a huge party school. Mm-hmm. So we did a lot of drinking in college and that's kind of where it started. Um, but still I was like a real high achiever in college, you know, like president of my sorority, getting good grades, like all that stuff. But it was Thursday through Sunday. It was no holds bar. I mean, like we would start, I don't know, with not even mimosas. We weren't that classy in college. It was like, <laughs> it start with like bad juice. Things. Yeah, or Bloody exactly. Mary or something. Like, yeah, yeah. Warm, or warm beer. vodka hidden under yeah. my bed mm-hmm. in the sorority house. Like, mm-hmm. not, not great. Um, so that was college, and we, after college, we moved. We got married pretty close after college. We moved to Chicago. Mm-hmm. So I lived with my husband in Chicago for five years before my daughter was born, and um, 
I call it my college extension. We had a whole group of friends there. We were riding trolleys and doing party buses Mm -hmm. and going to brunches. I mean, we lived around the corner from this one bar that did a all you can drink mimosa um, brunch on Sundays. And we would like walk in and then like walk home in the daylight, like around the corner. But it felt like it was 10 o'clock at night because I was like, you know, 10 mimosas deep or something like that. Yeah. Um, but it still it was just such a social thing and it felt like what everybody was doing and it was what everybody was doing. Mm-hmm. It's what all my friends were doing. Mm-hmm. That's what we did. Um, so, so then I had my daughter. I was the first one of my group of friends to have a baby. Mm-hmm. And as you can imagine, that changed a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so it stopped being an all the time thing, but it started being a let's get a bottle of wine and drink wine on the couch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we weren't going out, we weren't doing that, but that was the, and this resonated with me, with you. Like that was my adult version Mm -hmm. of it. Right. Like Mm -hmm. I'm so fancy with, I like dry red wine because I can't do that sweet stuff. Cause I'm like, I'm so, you're so sophisticated. Classy. Yeah, absolutely. Your palate is so much more experienced. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Couldn't, couldn't possibly stand a Moscato. Like, ridiculous so um wow. so that's and we became every night drinkers for mm-hmm. sure and I wouldn't say I drank well I, I mean I did I didn't drink till I was drunk but I drank every night mm-hmm. while I was had my daughter and all of that and um and then we moved out of Chicago when she was about 18 months old um and we got closer to the grandparents and all of that and it sort of continued through that uh, did any until, point during that time, did you ever like have little whispers of like, you know, this is probably not right or I should take a definitely. break or, okay. And what did that look like? Not, um, I never felt like I was always somebody it, similar to what Emily said. It was like, well, I don't have a problem. I just like wine. And it would be mm-hmm. more of the like, oh, I shouldn't drink so much so that I can make sure I'm working out so I can lose this baby weight. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't, a. it wasn't a. I shouldn't drink because drinking is not good for me. It was, I shouldn't drink because I'm not able to lose weight or I'm Mm -hmm. not able, like, that's why I'm not it. Honestly, now that I'm saying it out loud, I think that that was mostly the narrative. Like, well, if I could just kick wine, then I could probably kick these 10 pounds that I've been carrying around that I can't get rid of. Did you try to like take breaks or days off or anything then? Yeah, we would do like, um, we would do like, Monday through Wednesday, Monday through Thursday, only drinking on the weekends. But then it would become like, well, now it's Friday night, so I can drink the whole bottle if I want to because I did so many days without. So yeah. I've, I've gotten all those added up and I can drink them all tonight, yeah. you know? Yeah, I do. Um, so, yeah, that and that went on for a long time, for a few years. Um, we moved back to Indiana when my daughter, right before she turned two, um, and we coasted that way for a long time. I mean, up until March of 2020, um, my husband went through a major, like, I have to stop drinking mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. Like I can tell you it was March 6th, 2020 mm-hmm. is when it happened. And you, March 13th is yes. when the entire world shut down. Yes. So he was going through all of this. We got shut off from the world. Um, I had my son at that time. He was four months old. Mm -hmm. He was born in November of 2019. And we got locked in a house together for three months. Mm -hmm. And I did, I wanted to be the supportive wife, um, you know, do all the right things, make sure I was supporting him and what he was doing. So I didn't drink for three months straight. I was totally alcohol free. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about white knuckling it, Mm -hmm. holy moly, I was white knuckling it. And I got really good at it. And it was like, okay, like, I'm not going to drink in front of him. And he was the only person I could be in front of for three months. So like, yeah, that was great. Well, then slowly the world started to open back up and it became, well, I'm still not going to drink in front of him. But like when I get together with my friends, watch out Mm -hmm. because now I'm free. I can do my thing. Kids are taken care of. Make sure I'm getting home safely and I can drink as much as I want because Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem Mm -hmm. and I can handle it and I can make sure I'm safe Mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. Um, and I got to a place where it just felt really gross. Like I, I wouldn't say I was hiding anything because I wasn't, he knew what I was doing and Mm -hmm. he knew when I went out with my friends that I was drinking and whatever, but it was this weird rub with the two of us that was like, I had this like side life almost. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
and did you, it, it did didn't you ever, feel right. Like, the wanna, way... Did you ever want to go out more frequently than you normally would have just to drink or anything? Absolutely. Okay. Like, I mean, I did that. Shit let's too. make sure we get together so that I can have three glasses of wine tonight. Yes. Not because I want your company, yeah. because I want an excuse to have three glasses yeah. of wine. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and that's when, and that's where I was in 2021. Um, we were living with my parents. I still wasn't drinking in front of my husband, but I had gone out or done something with my friends the night before when I texted Emily, and mm-hmm. that's when she introduced me to the podcast. And um, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. When I first started listening, my whole goal was not to quit drinking mm-hmm. or to slow down or do any of that. My goal, I knew that there was something I wanted to change, and I liked the idea of what I was hearing. But then my my real goal was to stop beating myself up. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, maybe if I stop beating myself up, I'll feel better. And so like, let me see what the process is for that. I'm a very Mm -hmm. like process oriented Mm -hmm. person. Um, And it felt super corny at first. I was like, yeah, right. Like if I just think, like if I just make myself think like, nope, we're not doing that today or nope, we don't talk about ourselves that way. You know, I was like, this feels like an after school special. There's no (laughs) way this is going to work. But it, a hundred percent did. It's unreal to me. And that is, that is truly life changing. Like I went from thinking that there are some things that just are, that you just have to deal with and that like everybody deals with and is normal and whatever to now, I really truly believe and have seen if I don't like something, I can change it regardless of if it's an emotion or uh, something in my life. I didn't like my house. So we moved out of it. You know, like it's, your life is what you make it. And it really does all start with what you're telling yourself in your brain. Um, and I don't have to second guess myself or question what I am capable of, because I know if I want it bad enough, then it's on me to do it and to get it done. Love that so much. So you started with yeah. the goal of just, I'm just not going to shame myself anymore. And that's the first thing. And yeah. then with that goal and you stopping shaming yourself, did you drink less? Yeah, because I do think there was an undertone of wanting, there was an undertone of wanting to drink less. I knew I didn't feel good. I didn't like that Mm -hmm. feeling in the morning after I had drank so much. So I wanted to drink less. I did not want to stop drinking Mm -hmm. because who wants to stop drinking? I wouldn't be any fun anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I was telling myself. But I was like, yeah, it'd be good if I could stop having hangovers. That'd be Mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's totally, totally different now. It's what Emily said. It's like, When I want to drink now, what I think of is that I am taking away my clear headed cup of coffee in the morning that I love so much. It's my Mm -hmm. favorite part of the day. Mm -hmm. And I can do that. Like I can sabotage myself, but then I'm giving up that whole morning to feeling like garbage instead Mm -hmm. of feeling great. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just, it's powerful to think that way. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and like, you know, I was just thinking this morning this is the only time in my life where I've taken something out and life has gotten so much better Mm -hmm. instead of like, I was looking at what I needed to add to Mm -hmm. make it better or who Mm -hmm. needed to do what, like what I needed to, uh, kind of like push to someone else. Like Mm -hmm. I never thought that taking something away could make life so, so full. Mm. I love Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I think that's what part of the alive AF goal is, right? It's like, we're, we're removing something or, or reducing something, right? But to make that fun and, like, motivating to keep going, we have to add more joy into our lives, right? So it's, like, it's like kind of like the same thing. It's like we are removing something, but we're intentionally making things better so that we don't look to that other thing that we removed as, like, mm-hmm. something that we have to have anymore. Well, I think that's so important, too, because, honestly, I'm enjoying things things now that I haven't enjoyed or paid attention to since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Like Emily talked about 4th of July. I was at her parents' pool that day. We were both going down the water slide and swimming with our kids and doing handstands and like all of it. And it sounds silly, but it's, I feel like as adults, we think that that stuff is not for us anymore, Mm -hmm. but you can, it's really enjoyable when you let yourself do it. So finding those, I love my favorite part of the worksheet that I do every morning is what are you going to do today to feel alive? And some days it's just going on a long walk walk with my dog. On the 4th of July, it was, I'm going down the water slide at Emily's parents' pool today. (laughs) Like that's the one thing I'm going to do. I love it. Um, 
it's the same feeling as like when you have kids and they get excited about Christmas and you're yeah. reliving that through them. I know. It's that, but it's every day. I know. It's and so it's good. Fabulous. It's so yeah. good. I remember my first 4th of July. I probably have talked about it. You've heard me talk about it so many times. So the first 4th of July, which was five years ago, that I didn't drink and I had kind of committed. Like, I think I'm just done with this drinking thing. And I was at the pool at a 4th of July party with my niece. And they had a band and they were like throwing beers in the pool. And like, you know, it was like a party scene. And I was like going down the slide with her and jumping and playing volleyball. And like, I was just like, ah, like it was so fun. It was just like, it felt like being a kid again. Like this freedom. Like I I didn't care about what I looked like in my bathing suit. I wasn't Ugh. drinking. I was just being free to be myself like kids do, you know? And it was mm-hmm. so memorable. And, yeah. like, you just want to keep creating. It just was so memorable and motivating for me to, like, I want more of that. I want to feel yeah. that way more often. Because, like, when you drink, you never feel that way. You, th- It's like a fake feeling like that. That's yes. what you're after. That's what we think the alcohol is doing for us. Like, we're in that euphoric, like, party, you know, t- college kind of like, ah, everything's like, nothing matters, you know. But it's fake. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> there's it is. you're using alcohol for it, right? Yeah. And when you're sober watching uh, and I'm not this is I don't want to judge other people everybody's got their own stuff going on and their own journey with it but the contrast between sober people having fun Mm -hmm. and like the people who are drunk are literally just sitting on lawn chairs like staring off into space do you know what I mean like they're not doing anything and repeating Um, their stories repeating their stories laughing at at, like uh, like their their conversations really aren't interesting or no yeah the good thing about my personality is I'm super loud and my laugh is like loud obnoxious but when we're around people that drink they just think I'm drinking because I'm so loud and I'm like nope (laughs) (laughs) this is just what it is like it's just because you're lots of fun that's all right and I don't feel like the shame like I would wake up in the morning like oh my gosh what did I say like what and Mm -hmm. now I'm just like you know I don't really give a shit what I said because I meant it. Like I knew it was really me talking yeah. and not the line talking. So like, if you don't like it moving on, like it just, it's a totally different mind shift. Love mm-hmm. it. So did you guys join at the same time, the Alive AF program? No, um, she joined, I joined in March. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I didn't join until June. Um, but again, I remember we were sitting at our in-laws house and you were like, I joined the Angela's coaching program. I was like, what you did (laughs) and then she was like having so much fun with it and I I can't even remember I must have done something or had an over drink or something when I was like all right I'm joining too and then I texted her to the side I was like I joined today she's like yay oh my god we're all but truly I mean what Emily said at the beginning about and you say it in your podcast all the time I loved your podcast I was rooting you on I was all about it but the application of it is so, so powerful. And I think the journaling, the consistency of that, the SNP process for me has been life changing to know that I can handle any feeling that comes my way is ridiculously powerful. And my daughter is eight. So I have two kids. I've got an eight year old daughter and a three year old son. Um, she's a very anxious little human. She's I was the same way, a worrier by nature, all of that. And I've been able to use that process with her when she's afraid to go to bed or when she's nervous about starting third grade. And she asks me for it now. She's like, mom, can you, can you help me um, not be afraid to go to bed? And I'm like, yep, lay down. And then she just listens to me, talk her through. She pictures like the ball in her chest and then we poke holes in it and it dissolves and she feels better. Oh my um, so it's changing. I mean, it's just so powerful and I love I love that I have figured this out when my kids are still so little because I think it's going to be hugely beneficial for them, like you said, Emily, to see these coping skills and to practice it when they're still so impressionable. It's just huge. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It well, is and so I true. laugh to myself anytime I coach my older son who's 12. Like, I picture Angela how you're like, <laughs> my kids always roll their eyes when I'm like, nothing's gone wrong. These are, <laughs> so I'm like, and they're like, I'm like, what would Angela do? <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite is, your emotions are not a problem. Your emotions right. are not a problem. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. It's so I love good it. though. It's, it's so it great. Is. It's... And like my oldest son will be like, do you need to go for a quick walk? And I'm like, as a matter of fact, I will be back. Just my he was too. Her, my youngest her like, mom just said like notice. Like, cause I do, I talk, I'm like, I'm pausing, I'm pausing, I'm breathing, you know, and I'm like verbalizing <laughs> this as I'm in the moment, you know, and they're like, good, mom, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Her oldest is truly an old soul. He's like, I, I mean, it's, I can just totally see that whole interaction. Like mom, take a minute. You got it. I got, he's like, I got this. I got the younger two. You just take the dog, be back in five. It's like, thank you, sir. (laughs) But I mean, how powerful that he knows it's okay to like take a break when it's too much, you know, like I think back I'm not really sure if I was ever taught this or just felt like I had to like power through, you know, mm-hmm. and I, that's how it was like my entire first marriage. Like, it's fine. Just keep going. Like mm-hmm. it just, it, and you don't have to. Yeah. Mm-mm. You don't have to. And it's important that you know that, right? And you guys have skills now that are going to last your lifetime and it's going to influence your family. And I'm sure any other friends who can bear listening to you talk about any of this. <laughs> Are you like, if they only knew that about feelings or if they only yeah. knew about how their thoughts could change. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I just had that conversation. I went on a weekend um, to Indianapolis to the children's museum. That was by the way, a complete shit show. The Airbnb person forgot we were coming. Oh, it was no. like a disaster. It was three of me and two of my friends and our seven children all oh, under the age God. of nine. So, but I was able to stay positive and we like, we reframed it. I was like, this is going to be an adventure. We're going to figure it out. Like, it's going to be great. And I was talking to one of the other moms and she was like, how do you do that? She's like, I'm going to lose my mind. Like I could go upstairs and just burst into tears right now. Mm. So we'll go do it and then come back down. And we'll like, and so we started talking about your podcast and I think that that's, she, well, I think that that particular friend does want to make some changes with alcohol. I don't think she would ever go in search of, of a podcast about mm-hmm. specifically over drinking, mm-hmm. but that's what I love about your work is that it truly is not about the alcohol. Mm-hmm. It is all about the internal work that's going on. And it's so much bigger than that. Yeah. Um, so I passed it along and she's been listening and someday she'll whisper to me, I joined the coaching program. And I'll be very excited about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what? So besides the application of it when you joined a live AF, what else did you find valuable inside the program, or what did you love about it? Tell me more about that. Uh, the coaching calls are amazing because oh, even yeah. like I attend them. I haven't gotten coaching on the calls. I've gotten it in the Facebook group, but. Um, just listening, like usually our problems are pretty parallel, Mm -hmm. you know, or the things that people want coaching on, not necessarily problems, but the things that people are seeking coaching on Mm -hmm. are pretty parallel to either something I've gone through or something I'm going through. And so you get so much from it, just Mm -hmm. listening Mm -hmm. and observing or reading if it's online. I mean, it's just, and to know you're not alone. Like, I think like, I am so glad that I decided to make this change like now I mean I because I wanted to transform my life before I turned 40 (laughs) and I'm 37 and I'm like I'm gonna yeah like I already have but like it's gonna be (laughs) so much better than I thought it was gonna be when I turned 40 like Mm -hmm. it's just it's 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 so the community is amazing I love that. Yeah. The community is amazing. I'll say, I remember when I first joined, like one of the first posts that I made um, was something, cause I've realized my journey with alcohol has been very wrapped up in what my, what's going on with my husband. Mm-hmm. And so I've been putting myself to the side and just sort of reacting to what I think he needs for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And one of my first posts was something about to that effect. And I had a whole stream of people validating what I needed to hear, which was I that I'm important, that my emotions are important, and that I'm not a bad wife if I put myself first. And truly, while this isn't the goal, I know our relationship will be what it needs to be because I'm being authentic at this point. There's no more of that like codependency and whatever, and, and we'll figure it out, um, which has been huge. 
but, and just the fun and the positivity, like, I don't know these people. I've never seen them in real life, but somebody just posted the other day about their wedding and I'm like, yes, you're doing awesome. And oh, I'm also a huge swag fan, like in all areas of my life. So I am an Alive AF subscription box subscriber and you, it was Christmas morning. Oh I've God. only gotten one. I'm so excited for the it's next so one. Good. I use my stuff all the time. I'm calling today to order the lotion that oh you sent God, last fun. time because yeah. it smells so good. So that's the part that's so fun for me too, is like you do build in the fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you do, there are ways that people are talking about self-care and new things to try and um, you just make it enticing to feel good, you know, and there's, there really isn't anything better than taking care of yourself. So Aww. that's been huge for me too. I love that. Yeah. Well, and you know, you talk about like, find those things that you loved when you were a kid, Mm -hmm. Mm because they still have the same magic, you know? And so I, well, I was a dancer and now I'm a Zumba instructor. And so, I mean, I never really lost that, but I feel way cooler walking into (laughs) Zumba now than I did like (laughs) when I was drinking Thursday through Sunday. Like, it's just like, this is my magic hour. Welcome to my class. Now sit back and relax. I mean, it's just, and I take my kids to the park and I went down this (laughs) giant twisty slide that I thought my, I was sore the next day. I'm like (laughs) playing basketball with my son. And he's like, where'd you learn defense? I'm like, sixth grade, bro. I mean, like, (laughs) they got fun, mom. It's true. It's true. Swinging on swings, like swinging next to my kids. I can't tell you the last time I was on a swing. And I just, I'm like, this is awesome. You know, like, it's just so fun. And I was, I posted this in the group too. My daughter has recently really gotten into tennis and I was a big tennis player in high school and I've not played since high school. And she and I went out and hit and I was like, dang, I forgot how much I like this, you know? And so I've been back out by myself a few times and it's just, it opens up a whole new world for you um, when you're not waiting for the alcohol at the end. Cause like we've yeah. talked about this before too. It's like, oh yeah, I'll run a 5k. So then I can have the beer that's offered at the end or it's ridiculous. Know, and when that, crazy. when that's removed, it's, you get to enjoy the actual thing, yeah. which is the magic. Yeah. I love it. Well, and the reason I went from planning drinks to choosing to go alcohol free was like, planning drinks was still taking up so much more mind space than I was willing to give up. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, is this enough? And will I still feel okay to get up at five 30 and work out before all my kids get up? And well, do I want the red or the white? Like it was too much, it was too much chatter. So I was like, we're just going to take a break. And now there's that piece. Like I don't have all of that going on. Mm -hmm. I've had a little bit of a coffee addiction, but I've never, blacked out and said things I didn't mean when I drank coffee so I feel like you know what it's fine my yeah, husband I actually, mean, I'm trying to cut back on my caffeine it's a little got a little extra this summer <laughs> so my goal right now is not to have it after noon um but my husband's like you know I'm really I'm really proud of you for cutting back just two days ago he's like I'm really proud of you for working on that caffeine addiction he's like it's a real problem I'm like what <laughs> Oh, he's like, yeah, you, need it. you can't talk to anybody. You need it in a special way. And it has to be this certain temperature. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Like, um, thanks for being proud of me, you know. Oh, <laughs> but that's okay. Well, Angela, I know actually, how to do it. I know how to cut back, right? Like, I eat same thing. I'm going to start planning. Yeah. You got to plan for it. Cut back. Let yourself have the urges. I got this. I thought of you actually the other day because there's a really cute little local coffee shop in our town and they have the cutest swag Mm. and the new t-shirt that I told you I'm a swag girl. Um, the new t-shirt that they just made is bright pink and all it says on it is badass coffee lover. Oh my God. I was like, I'm good. I need to ship this to Angela. That's who who needs to have it. (laughs) So it's not been all rainbows and daisies though, right? And unicorns, right? So let's just talk about that. Were there any stumbling blocks? I want to make sure that everybody gets the full picture of things, right? So when you first started like making your drink plans and you guys, sounds like you came into the program with the skill of like, you're not going to be hard on yourself. You're not going to beat yourself up, which is amazing. But even though we say that to ourselves, it still comes in at times, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. let's just talk, like, were there any obstacles that you had to overcome or ever times where you had a failure? Like, how did you work through that? I definitely had over drinks, but, I mean, they were cut in half to what they used to be. So mm-hmm. I would kind of like, you know, this happened, but, and I I, I still do the worksheets. So, mm-hmm. like, um, like, what can you think about today no matter what happened yesterday? Yeah. That question is real powerful for yeah. me. Um, 
and I mean, my husband still drinks a lot. And so I, I hate when I say a lot because it sounds daunting. He goes through, right now he's not drinking during the week, but when I started a live AF, he was, he was drinking every night. Mm -hmm. And so I've had to set boundaries with him that have, some have gone well and others have not because I think he thought he was like losing his drinking body. Mm -hmm. And so we've had a lot of conversations. And so that isn't easy because sometimes I'm like, I sure hope that we are headed down the same path Mm -hmm. and we're not going in separate directions. However, I have to focus on me right now. So I can't worry about that. Like that'll work itself out, but that's scary because I'm already been divorced. I don't want to be divorced Mm -hmm. again. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I can sometimes lose myself with that. Um, I, I, but I think applied. that's great that you, that that's, ex- I mean, that's my advice to people when a lot of spouses, you know, if we, if you drink as a woman, like a lot of times we attract people that also drink or used to drink mm-hmm. and that's exactly the right way to do it though. You have to focus on you and take care of yourself. And that's exactly the conversation that I had with my husband when I first started this. I'm like, cause he was a heavy drinker. And I'm like, and he was making some mistakes and I'm like, this isn't the life that I'm going to have. Right. You know? And so however that looks, this is, I'm going to keep going in this direction, but just so you know, I'm not going to do that, but I'm also not going to monitor you. Like you have to go figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. And that was so hard to let off the gas pedal of that. Oh, yeah. Are we the same people, the three of us? Are we the same person? You guys need to come. (laughs) You need to come to Mexico, by the way. You knew that was coming. You're both coming to Mexico. I'm putting that into the universe. Yeah, Uh, well, I would love to. We can talk about it. It wouldn't take very much for me to get (laughs) Well, like, Sorry. You know, I like with my husband, like I knew I couldn't control and I had listened to the podcast on husbands, but you're like, Hey, look, cause I reached out for coaching. You're like, mm-hmm. Hey, listen to this again. And so to listen to it in my journey of being a non drinker, that was key. Like I needed to hear it all again. Cause I was like, you know, you're still buying my favorite wine, even though you know, I'm not drinking. And mm-hmm. I honestly think it's kind of his love language. Cause honestly, for the first entire month that I was not drinking at all, it made it very clear. Every time he went to the store, he'd be like, do you need anything? Like, mm. no, like mm-hmm. I no. And then I'm like, oh, okay. So maybe he's like, just, he's just got to figure out a different way to like deliver something to you or like show you yeah. appreciation or something. Right. He's just, he's, yeah. he's learning. Yeah. He's learning. And yeah. so yesterday we went to lunch and I'm like, you know, I, like I said, when I started, like you can have your own path, but I've noticed you've cut back and you know, it just, it feels really good. And so I want to thank you. And he does not take compliments. So he just made eye contact, gave me a little smile and then keep kept eating. Oh, I love that. But we talked about that on the podcast too. Like naturally they all kind of like cut back because their person wasn't drinking so much. So that's a huge yeah. influence on, on your And household. I definitely, when I started to feel all the feelings, that was hard. I mean, like mm. I had, a, I think, um, I posted about it in the Facebook group, but there was a week that I pretty sure I cried every day. Like Mm -hmm. I was just like, what am I doing? I don't, I can't do this. Like, Mm -hmm. what does this even mean? Like, how does this even look? And it's like, you just have to take it. It was either you or coach Steph that told me like, you got to just focus on honestly, sometimes like minute by minute, like it doesn't have to be this, you know, it doesn't have to like be planned out because I'm mm-hmm. such a planner. So mm-hmm. I just thought I needed all the answers right away. And yeah. you, you will not have that. I mean, you're making big changes yeah. to your mm-hmm. life. Like mm-hmm. I, I was probably drinking 20 years of my life and I've decided to stop. Like that's a lot of work. It's yeah. not going to come in a week, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's a lot of unprocessed feelings that have not been yes. looked at. Right. And so it's going to take time and patience. Yeah. 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 I, so I definitely have had some stumbling blocks. I have found that I think, um, my experience white knuckling has been very beneficial for difficult emotions mm-hmm. because I do like, it's easier for me to stop myself. Cause I got used to stopping myself. Right. So mm-hmm. I can stop there and think like, okay, now I know what to do. So I can use SNP to try to like calm my nervous system down and figure that out. What's been difficult for me individually is the positive emotions that come along with drinking or like the positive times that you would. So 
my first deviation from my from dry July was I went to um, a memorial service for my aunt. Yeah. And of course it was sad, but I, w- I didn't drink from sadness. I made it all the way through the entire thing until we were at the dinner afterwards and everybody was like, okay, everybody get a glass of red wine. It was her favorite, like grab it and we're going to toast. And I didn't over drink. I only drank two glasses of wine that night, mm-hmm. but it wasn't on my plan. Mm-hmm. And it was a lot of chatter about, well, this is for her. I mean, she, no, she would not, you know, like, Nobody would have cared. Yeah. I could have poured my Diet Coke in the wine glass. Nobody would have cared. Mm-hmm. But it was like, I didn't want to, I had FOMO. Like, I didn't want to be not a part of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as what you were saying just a minute ago, about Emily Emily knows this. I'm pretty sure I'm in the week right now where I've been crying every day, mm-hmm. um, doing, some of the, <laughs> doing some of the work. And I was on the uh, coaching call. And you said something about, I'm going to try really hard not to cry right now. Um, You said something about, somebody put in in something about coaching about their husband and their relationship and whatever. And your response was, well, maybe you just need to be angry about it. And I have always associated anger as a negative emotion. Mm. And I don't know why, but it clicked with me that there have been things that have happened as a result of his drinking in the past that I had deep anger about Mm -hmm. that I never let myself feel because I just wanted to make sure he was okay and be that good wife and whatever. And as soon as you said that, I was like, shit, I'm pissed. Like I never have processed that. And it's not, I didn't go fight with him. Like that's Mm -hmm. not what it was. It was, it was the actual vibration in my body that you talk about where Mm -hmm. it's like, this is deep seated and it's been in my belly for years, just like being pushed down. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, definitely burst into tears during the coaching call, which is why when you were like, anybody want to come up for coaching? I was like, oh, God. Everyone's Not silent. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I love that you shared that with me because I'm like, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, right? Yeah. Like, I was yeah. fully engaged, but I was just, I mean, it was that one sentence. And um, there was something mm. I can't remember, may have been in the Facebook group. I may have heard it somewhere else. But I told Emily this week for some reason, like I've been adding meditation and all of that. And I keep going back to like, visualizing a version of myself that is the same age as my daughter is right now. Mm. And thinking about like, how am I taking care of that person? You know, like I've let things happen to her that I shouldn't have let happen to her. And I like, that is who I need to have in my mind when I'm thinking about how I'm taking care of myself and how Mm. I'm moving forward. So definitely not all sunshine and roses, but the beauty of your program is that that's okay with me. Like I, you're fully, you're fully transparent that this is going to be messy and there's going to be, you're going to fall off emotional cliffs and you're going to make mistakes and accepting those mistakes and not beating myself up about it and just being cool with it being a journey has been huge. Wow. I'm going to start crying. You guys, Oh, (laughs) by the way, we're going a little over time. Are you both okay? Yeah. yeah it's sad. Okay. Wow. I would not be doing mean, anything it, else. Yeah. No, I blocked out my whole day. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> 12-year-old's got it under control. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. I mean, it's just like, you know, feelings are meant to be felt and uh-huh. it's, and it's scary. And, and I remember feeling raw emotions, like going through my divorce. And so the summer after I got divorced, I felt so alive because I was like, I finally have done something for me. I mean, it was hard and I cried, Mm -hmm. but like I was doing, and I feel that this summer, that's exactly how I feel, except it's like even better, you know, because like the day that I burst into tears, there were like four TVs on in my house and my daughter (laughs) was crying because I peeled the banana all the way instead of half. And then I don't, some other thing. And I just like, literally all the kids were in the kitchen. I was like, I just need to cry. And they were Mm -hmm. like, okay, well, I don't know how to handle mom crying, but (laughs) I just, and I like took some deep breaths and then I called them back down when I was fine, but it's just, and I don't even know what it was. It was just like, you know, and I've screamed and yelled and it's been ugly, but I can go back and say, because they're older, it was, it's normally directed towards the boys because they just like choose to not listen often. So it's like, Hey, I get frustrated when I've asked in a respectful manner and you two just choose 
not to listen. Mm -hmm. And so it just, I mean, it's, it's just better conversations, like, because they get it and they've seen me grow and like go through all of this. And it's like, I, I mean, I, they're, I, I, I'm proud of me. And for Mm -hmm. them to see me proud of myself is like, just, it's just all I wanted. Like I, you know, you never know what to expect with motherhood. You know, you think it's this going to be some way and then it turns into what it is. But like, I can honestly say like that 25 year old that they handed my, you know, they handed me my first baby and I was like, okay, I can do this. Like I, I know that I'm doing it now. And I went through a lot of periods where I was like, I don't think that I'm doing this right. And like, I am so proud of myself and I never thought that I would get there. Like I wake up every morning, like just ready because I, I feel that I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I feel like I have the tools to conquer anything that comes my way. And I just, it's just an amazing feeling to be confident and proud and like know that you're just doing what you've meant to be doing your whole life. Like it's just, and then I started to have thoughts like, I don't think I'm going to teach forever because like, I just think my life is going to pull me in different directions. And that used to terrify me because I always wanted to be a teacher. Like I'd come home from school and play school and now I'm like, and that's okay. Like Mm -hmm. you can be whoever it's just a different, it's a different level when you start to kind of let all of those things. It's a vortex, right? It's like, Oh, you're so narrow minded. And like, I used to think I was all open-minded and all the things and I was to a certain extent. Right. But like, I, I think it was just like a tunnel vision almost. But then when you Mm -hmm. learn how to think about things differently or consider different perspectives or change the way you're thinking about things. And then you do something big, like heal your relationship with alcohol and like learn how to be emotional and all of this stuff. It's like literally anything is possible now. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, who knows what's going to happen in five years? Like, it's so exciting to like not yes. know, to know that your life doesn't have to look exactly the way it looks right now. Like it can take a total different path, you know, and mm-hmm. you get to decide well, what that is. And to know that it's, it's what you just said, Emily, to know that your worst fear could happen and you could handle it is like, I mean, I told you before, I've, I've, I'm prone to anxiety. I've always been anxious. I'm a worrier. And so I spent a good chunk of my adult life just like holding on for dear life. Mm -hmm. Like maybe if I am, you know, if I just fly under the radar, nothing bad will happen to me or like, you know, but it's like, no bad stuff is going to happen and it can happen and I'll, I'll get through it and it'll be fine. Um, That's incredibly powerful. And I think like the S and P process, which has just been so important for me is you realize that when you process that, when you feel your feelings, when you sit in them and let them come out, the thing that made you feel that way is still there when you're done with it, but you're at peace with it, Mm -hmm. which is like, it's just a totally different way to walk through life. I think. Um, it's way more empowering. Yeah. You know, like you you don't, you're not in reaction, right? It's like, okay, this is happening. This feels terrible. And okay, I'm, I'm, I can think through this in a more clear manner. I can make better decisions, right? Like, I don't have to do anything right now. It's not actually an emergency. Like, it's very, very powerful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And just saying no to things that don't serve me. I always, I was a yes to everything. And now I don't even give excuses, which makes me feel like a total badass. Like, Emily, can you blah, blah, blah? I'm like, no. So. Because people, <laughs> people wait for, you know, like the reason. And I'm just like. Okay, Just I can tell you secondhand about this because we, there's one member of our extended family that is particularly difficult to deal with and very demanding. And I've been in this family for a long time, right? I've been married for 13 years and she's the new girl in town. True. And um, she just said no to this person. And I was like, <laughs> how did you do that? Like she actually, you said no, and she listened, and it worked. Like, teach me your ways. So yeah, Emily's much better at that than I am. <laughs> I'm working on it. I, I was just telling one of my friends this, this morning, it's like, 
when people in our relationship with me, they know exactly where I stand on things. I yes. am not pretending that I want to go to something and then going there and feeling all resentful and just like obligation and all that. Like if I go to something, it's because I want to be there. Right? right. Like, mm-hmm. and they can trust that. And when they're in relationship with me, that's my, I'm being authentic. Like I'm not doing yeah. things because I'm trying to make somebody else happy. Although I do care about people. Like it's so right. hard to explain oh, that. Yeah. Right. It's like, I want to be that person and help out and do the things. But if it comes at too much of a cost for me, then I know that I have to say no, or I, that I'm the number one priority. And if other people mm-hmm. think that's selfish, that's fine. But I know what's best for me and what's not. So, oh, yeah. 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 Well, and it puts you in a position. I mean, it's not, it isn't selfish, which I know you know that, but mm-hmm. it puts you in a position to be able to do what you're doing now and think about the impact that you're having yeah. because you know, like that is what happens when you put yourself first, you get to be the best version of yourself mm-hmm. for everyone else that's yeah. around you. And that's a way bigger impact than the in the moment obligation. Absolutely. I can talk about it all day. Doing it is a different story, but I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. Well, your challenge this week is to say no to something. Maybe just start okay. small. What, what is something small that you, next some, like if somebody asks you for something, you're like, no, or mm. no, thank you. Oh, well, I say no to my kids all the time, mm-hmm. but I don't think that counts. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any obligations coming up that I don't really want to do. Let me look at my calendar. I'm going to think about that, yeah, think but about I, it. That's I your challenge homework. accepted. Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't accepted. have to be a big one. Like that family member, like that sounds like a big deal, but like start small, you know, <laughs> Yeah. and grow your yeah. capacity to say no to things more. And then I you will. and I will be saying no to that family member together. I tried, I, I was making eye contact, like. We're saying no. And you were like, I'm just going to. I know, Emily. I know. No, I I'm kidding. I'm wolf. kidding. No, it's true. I know. <laughs> I'm okay. kidding. If she won't, I will. It's fine. <laughs> I love it. So do you guys, so just kind of like, we'll kind of wrap it up here in the next couple of minutes. This has been so fun, by the way. Thank it you. It has been. Um, it really has. When you guys are struggling, say you're in the minute, or if you have an urge or something like that, do you guys like text each other? Do you have like a little protocol that you do? Like, tell me how you guys, you do the work together. Um, not anything formal, but I just texted Emily yesterday. Cause like I said, this week has been um, pivotal for me. So I think she's probably sick of me because I text her constantly. Um, but I mean, that's it. Like whenever there's an aha moment or mm-hmm. I feel like, like you, you found this first and I would say that you're further along in the process than I am. Not that it's like a race. No. Or- competition. Yeah, yeah. But I go to her for advice. Like, mm-hmm. you know, did this, have you done this? One thing that I've specifically asked her about is like, let's talk about the boundaries that you've set because I'm stuck. Like, I, I don't know how to write this boundary in a way that is authentic to me. Mm-hmm. Like not, not a, um, like I need my boundary to be what I'm actually going to do mm-hmm. and what I can actually commit to doing. Mm-hmm. And when I first started setting boundaries, it was things that I knew, we're too big. Yeah. Um, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. So yep. that's one way that she supported me a lot. And honestly, just having, there's no comparison because we are married to almost the same person. Mm-hmm. We live such parallel lives. Um, we've known each other forever. Like it's a complete safe space to share anything, which is incredible. It's a huge blessing. Honestly, yeah, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I second that. I mean, there's just no one who understands no matter like, you know, I can explain it to my best of friends, like what I'm going through, but they just don't have the same level of understanding that Amy does because of the dynamics of the family and all of the things. Like, it's just, you know, it's me. It might sound silly to someone else. No, We're like, sense. I text my sister-in-law. Like, yeah. yeah. My sister-in-law have that about the, the, she, you know, my husband has a brother and there's two other siblings and like, it's, we know, we don't even have to really explain it. It's just like, you know, right? Yeah. And they're like, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. I yes. totally understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and to have like no holds bar access to be able to bitch about stuff mm-hmm. with somebody who understands and loves the same people that you mm-hmm. love. Like it's not, that's huge because when you talk to somebody who's not dealing with some of this stuff, who's outside of it, it, just the unconditional understanding that we can like love these people, but also be struggling with them mm-hmm. is huge. Yeah. You mean and you can no love judgment, somebody and want to you know? throw a punch? Yes. Yeah. You really can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, 
know, like, I've tried to tell my mom some of it, but she, of course, gets defensive of me. Yeah. And, like, you know, because she wants what's best for me. And it's like, no, he's not a bad person. He didn't mm-hmm. do anything wrong. I'm just annoyed. And so, you know, she's only hearing my perspective. Yeah. And, and Amy's only hearing my perspective, too, but she just, like, gets it. You know, right. it's just different. Yeah. Well, and I've known him for so long, too. You know, yeah. like, it's just we've all, the four of us have known each other forever, mm-hmm. which is just a different level. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Well, if there's any listeners that are hearing this and have friends or close relatives or something that they might be scared, like you guys, I think what is so beautiful about your stories is like the first thing that you shared with each other is removing the shame. And Mm -hmm. you have like, regardless of beating yourself up or having an overdrink, that has to happen first, no matter where you're coming in at, because we know we're not going to be perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, you're able to be stuck in that cycle forever. But you guys came in together in a relationship saying we're not going to be hard on ourselves. And I Mm -hmm. think there's so many listeners who are so scared to share about what they're going through, especially around alcohol, because there's so much stigma and shame associated with it. But you guys were just like open with each other right away. And I can't stress that, um, that enough, you know, Mm -hmm. to people hearing. And shame is such a hard emotion to feel yeah Mm -hmm. but honestly everything that I've said other people have gone through you know like Mm -hmm. it's like the nodding of the Mm heads like when I read the post in Facebook like in a live AF it's like yeah been there Mm -hmm. I mean like so it it's like the more you speak about it the smaller the shame becomes yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and then you just learn not to care about what other people think right Exactly. It's like you have to shine light on it. You know, it's like people trying, you know, people who are, I talk about this, like coming out of the closet and who say they're gay or whatever it is. It's like they, they let, they, they lived in a shadow for their whole Mm -hmm. lives. And this is the same thing. Like you're, you're hiding from yourself. You're hiding who you are. And like to, to get help, to move the needle on it, we have to be willing to talk about it and share and so I love well, and a lot, that. I think a lot of times, too, you don't realize how many people have the same thinking that you do. Like, I went to a baby shower, and I knew that there would be mimosas there and because it was just people that I am friends with that drink. And mm-hmm. it's the first time I've seen them and haven't. And I was a little nervous, and I got in my head about it. And then I'm like, but it doesn't really matter. And they asked, like, you're not drinking? I'm like, no, I'm not drinking anymore literally end of conversation Mm -hmm. and I was like ready with all of like these you know (laughs) yes but like and then they were like oh well like maybe I mean I would like to cut back too and so then it's like a conversation yes Yes. so like the two of you right like usually if you're over drinking you're friends with people who over drink and they they're like it gives them permission to think about things yeah and Mm -hmm. like you always said it was never it was never a secret that I was a drinker. I mean, like, you know, I was always drinking wine. So it was, people didn't know. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? (laughs) Yeah. So good. Any final comments, things that you want people listening to the podcast or in a live AF to know about doing the work, joining the program, getting support? I would like to say a couple things. First of all, if you're listening and you haven't joined, then do it because Literally, that's the only regret that I have is I didn't start sooner. Mm-hmm. And I yep. swear everyone I listen to on the podcast says that. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. But it's true. Like, don't wait. Just do it. Yes. Because you'll find your path. And it's so amazing. And then the other thing is the work. And Coach Steph told me this. But I didn't realize how deep the work goes. I mean, there's stuff that I'm bringing up from how people treated me in elementary school. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, so empowering because I meditate on it when I journal in the morning. I do journal meditation every morning. And to let that shit go, mm-hmm. woo, it's good. It's a good feeling. Good. Yeah. Thank you. What about you? Yeah, I, I would second that. Definitely join. Um, I very much appreciate the new pricing structure that you've done, Angela, because it was really – it was a hard pill for me to swallow to invest a whole bunch up front. But mm-hmm. as, if I'm being completely honest with you, I don't even realize that it's coming out of my checking account at this point. And it's, it's like, no-brainer. I wouldn't, I've honestly thought about this before that like, even if I get to a point where I feel like I'm good, I don't want to cancel because I want to just hang out in the Facebook group and like be friends with all of you. So yeah. it's 110% <laughs> worth it. Do it. Um, I would also say get the Alive AF box because it's so much fun. Um, and just, be gentle with yourself. It's not going, you're not going to snap your fingers and have it be different, but 
be gentle and be honest with yourself. And if you do those two things, it'll come together. It'll, it'll change your life. Thank you so much. I couldn't agree more, obviously. You guys shared amazing insights and information, um, and I'm so thankful for both of you. And thank you for your contributions in the Facebook group, too. It really adds to the energy there, and I just appreciate you both so much. Thank you for trusting me to be your coach. Oh, we definitely appreciate you. Like we said, you're our best friend. You just don't yes. know it. <laughs> well, I am going to say this again, but I'll see you Is in that Mexico. creepy? Is that creepy? No. I'll see you all in Mexico in December. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll She's talk. putting it out there. I'm putting We're it gonna out there. We're going to need to talk about Anything it. Anything you guys want to put out there before we go to the universe? Just thank you. You're that's welcome. all. Thank you. Um, that's, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, I, I appreciate don't... you so much. Don't stop. I mean, I don't know what I would, I don't know where my life would be if I hadn't found you, but I promise it would not be as good as it is. Like, I'm sure because as women, we feel like, you know, we could always do more, but like you are doing so much and you are changing Mm -hmm. so many lives. And it's just, I, it's like generationally, you're changing my kids' lives. Like you're changing countless lives way past the people that are in your coaching group. Right. I do because our children that. now are learning. You know, I, and, you know, I appreciate that so much, and I love hearing that because I, you know, as as it's hard, right? Like sometimes it's yeah. hard, and it's like you put out all the stuff, and you don't know if it makes a difference, and you're like, "What am I doing?" You, you know, just like being a human. Yeah. So I really and do just that you're so that. authentic. Like I, mm-hmm. I never, like, like that's why I think you're my best friend because like we know we're getting the real Angela like on podcasts and everything, and it's just like when you asked. Tell me your favorite Angelisms. I had like 20. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, okay, Emily, let someone else respond on the thread. Oh, my gosh. And I do know we have to go eventually, but I have to tell you, I laughed. <laughs> There's one memorable moment on your podcast where some idiot wrote into you about, like, typos in your email. Yes. And you were like, listen, I have stuff to do. And, like, if you want to wait for three weeks while somebody else edits my email, then that's fine. But you're like, I'm not going to do that. Like, <laughs> me typos and all and I was like yes this is my girl like who cares be about all that little stuff work right b minus yeah. get it out there yeah. get it done oh yeah I do love the b minus work yeah I, oh, it's I, I tell myself that often yeah. are you sharing uh-huh. your um Emily you don't have the box do you no I don't what, what the hell Seriously. I know, right? I know. Hey, Come I on. feel a little bullied, but I'm, so I'm sorry. Christmas gift. Well, I was going to say, Amy, gift. you need to share some of the Angelism coasters with Emily if you haven't yeah. already yeah. in your box. I but. haven't because I'm I'm hoarding them all for myself. They're next to my bed <laughs> where I set my water at night. Is it weird that I've memorized the intro to your podcast? So when I press play, I say it along with you. Is that weird? No, no, no not weird. <laughs> I'm glad you guys got to see the behind the scenes today. But. Me too. It was so fun. All right, you two. We could go on for days, but we yes. should wrap. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll Thank talk you. To you soon. Now, listen, wasn't that probably one of the best podcast episodes of this podcast? I mean, I cannot stop thinking about it. I love them so much. They shared a lot of stuff, a lot of deep stuff the good stuff, the bad stuff, their relationships, the work that they put into changing their relationship, not only with alcohol, but with themselves. I love that they started this work with the work of, you know, dropping the shame that they had around over drinking and helping each other and being honest with each other. And then of course, getting the support in the Alive AF program. So if you want to be like Amy and Emily, I'm inviting you to join Alive AF right now. I want you to come in and get the support that you need and actually do the work that I talk about on this podcast (laughs) and have all the resources and get the SNP process and do the monthly workshops and have the worksheets and the on-demand videos and the coaching calls and all of the support of the amazing community that is in the Alive AF coaching program. So not to worry, I've included the link to join. You can join today. You also need to take Amy's advice and get the Alive AF subscription box. The next one ships out the first week in September. The link for that is also in the show notes. And then I still have five spots available and maybe Amy and Emily will both be with me in Cancun. That link to join the coaching and sober retreat experience in Cancun is in the show notes as well. I love you all so much. Thank you for being here and I can't wait to talk to you next week. Didn't